This might sound a little weird to some of you, but have you ever been up somewhere really high, looked down, and had the urge to jump? And then you shudder, back away, and go do something else. This urge probably came out of nowhere and disappeared as quickly as it came. Turns out, this urge has a name, the Call of the Void. To this day, there is no definite answer or explanation for the feeling, but there are theories. In 2012, Jennifer Hames led a study at the Department of Psychology at Florida State University on the Call of the Void. She called it the High Place Phenomenon and eventually said that the Call of the Void is potentially the mind's weird way of appreciating life. They questioned 431 students about their experiences of High Place Phenomenon, their history of suicidal ideation, history of depression, and history of anxiety and the results were unexpected. Both those with and those without a history of suicidal ideation or depression experienced the call of the void. But the higher levels of anxiety, the more frequently they got it. When the results were correlated, the team arrived at the following, admittedly somewhat speculative scenario. Imagine a person with high anxiety sensitivity. She walks near the edge of the roof, in super-fast reaction to her physical sensation of anxiety, her survival instinct forces her away from the edge. Yet, when she looks at the ledge, she sees it's sturdy. There was never any danger. Her brain tries to process an answer to the question, why did I back up if it was safe? A logical answer is that she must have been tempted to jump. In other words, Haynes explained, people misinterpret the instinctual safety signal and conclude they must have felt an urge to leap. Hence the study's title, An Urge to Jump Affirms to Urge to Live. An alternate theory was offered by Adam Anderson of Cornell University. Rather, that this leap of logic at least is rather an extreme and counterintuitive display of risk aversion. The innate tendency of gambling in the face of risk is on display here. Similar to how if you're a thousand pounds down on the poker table, you're willing to put more in to try to win back your losses. You place a greater value on avoiding present loss than you do on future gain. So being on a high building with a fear of heights, you know that the ground below is the safest option, the desirable option. Thus, you feel the pull of the quickest way there. It doesn't make sense as taking that option would cause your demise. It tackles the panacea of being at a height. We solve the fear of heights problem, jumping. Then we are confronted with the fear of death problem. Numerous other theories have been examined as well. From the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, it's a moment of existentialist truth about the human freedom to choose to live or die. There's the vertigo of possibility when humans contemplate dangerous experiments and freedom. He provides an example by writing about someone walking along the cliff. The person becomes anxious although the cliff is stable and there is no wind that might blow them down. That's not what the person is afraid of. The person is afraid that they will willingly throw themselves from the side of the cliff. It's not the fear of any danger. It is the realization that the person cannot trust themselves. He explained it as suddenly realizing that you have a choice that your identity is unstable. This theory explains that we are simply trying to understand our freedom. The idea that we have a choice in life or death. Not to mention the urge to self-sabotage is purely human. So thoughts of ending it all are not abnormal to have. Even though there is no scientific foolproof explanation for the call of the void, the fact that many theories and several studies have been done on it does prove one thing. It's a shared sensation.